Good morning, America. Thanks for joining us here on the Andy Kirkendall Show, where Andy interviews actors, writers, filmmakers, athletes, musicians, songwriters, and more, and asks them, what do you do and why do you do it? So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy the show. Good morning and welcome to Morning Moments. Thank you for being with us today, whatever platform you're seeing this on and actually whenever you're watching it. Today we have a special guest. Uh, she is a the director of Lindell uh, Recovery Network. She is also the co-host of Hope Report. I, I, it's my privilege to bring uh, Melissa Hooray to Morning Moments. Welcome. Thank you, Andy. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So let me ask you the big question. What are you, what do you do and why do you do it? All right. Well, Andy, let me just say, I love the format of your show. I've watched a few of them. I love how you just boil it down and make it simple. Two questions. And I, I really had to think about this a little bit because, you know, I wanted to pray about it and get it right. And so what do I do? Well, I try to make Jesus known through my different life experiences and through the testimonies of others. That's really what I want to do is point people to the Lord through what I've gone through in my life. So you mentioned my roles, because when I was thinking about this question, I was thinking, do I want to focus on my roles? You know, because often when people ask us to introduce ourselves, we may say, you know, oh, I do this for a job or, or I'm a mom or those different roles. So I tried to think of it in terms of being a child of God. In my work role, I do. Uh, I am the director of the Lindell Recovery Network, as you said, which is a self-service online platform. It's very testimony driven. It's got a couple thousand testimonies of people who have come out of addiction and who the common denominator of them all is that they've been set free by Jesus. And as a former addict myself, you know, we're often told to seek the things of the world to find help. And I know you come from um, that background as well, healthcare and healthcare is important and God uses people with those skills to help us. So I'm not saying that's not important, but what I've found in my journey through 15 years of blackout binge drinking is that all the things of the world would only take me so far. I would get a little bit of reprieve from my drinking, but another relapse always waited around the corner. So until I really sought Jesus with my whole heart, I was unable to free myself from the chains of addiction. So that's really the mission statement of the Lindell Recovery Network is to set people free and break the bondage of addiction. It's, it's something that Mike Lindell is very passionate about. So we want to lead people to others who have been set free and then also connect them to resources. So everything is free. People can connect with churches, uh, low cost or free treatment centers, and then other biblical resources on that platform. And through my work with Mike, I also came into doing an internet TV show. It started with three days a week. It's expanded to five now. So the Hope Report show, which I co-host with Jason Perry, he's a ex-Navy SEAL, former Boston SWAT cop. He, you know, he's a military guy. And then you've got me, this addiction counselor girl from Minnesota. And we come together on the platform to do the Hope Report. We have testimonies of people who've been set free. And then we also have biblical teaching and topical things we do throughout the week. And like you said with your testimony, Andy, you know, you were in healthcare and then now you're in broadcasting. I kind of did it backwards than, you know, what you're describing. I started out as a news anchor and reporter and I did that for seven years. And it was during the peak of my addiction that I was doing that work. And it was really hard to fake my fake it to the public and put forward this um, image of, of something that wasn't real. So I struggled every day with feeling like I was a fraud and that I was living a lie because I had known Jesus since I was a young girl. When I was nine years old, I accepted him as my Lord. I don't, my Lord and savior. I really don't know if I accept, accept him as my Lord for sure, my savior, but you know, I thought, okay, I'm not going to hell, but I, I hadn't really gotten the repentance piece down yet. So when I was 15 or so, I plunged into a world of blackout binge drinking, um, you know, just getting into relationships at a young age and going down the highway to hell. And, but through that all, I felt a pursuit of Jesus. And I have come to believe that when I accepted him at nine, I was sealed with the Holy Spirit. As it says in Ephesians 1.13, I was given the down payment and the deposit of the Holy Spirit. And he kept pursuing me throughout that rebellion and throughout the sin and the running from him and through a marriage and a divorce when I was too young and through a, a, a child, a beautiful child I had from that marriage and continued to binge drink. Uh, he finally came and rescued me from that lifestyle. So I have three, you said the second part of your story, 
how, what do you do and how do you do it? I feel that I do it in three ways through my salvation story, my addiction story, and then another story that happened later about marital betrayal. But through that and being open and honest, I just share with people what the Lord has led me through. Beginning with the salvation piece, I told you I was saved at nine, but I really didn't know anything about following the Lord. I didn't know what it looked to have us looked like to have a surrendered lifestyle. I wasn't really discipled as a child. My dad was an alcoholic and my mom was really fixated on his issues. So I felt really lost in the shuffle and I didn't have an identity that was built in, in Christ. And that was really my downfall because if we don't find our identity in the Lord, we're going to find it in the things of the world. So I sought drinking and getting uh, affirmation from boys. And, and that was what was fueling me. But we find that when we pursue those things, they always end up, um, they end up empty and there's an emptiness in our soul. And there's a longing for the only thing that satisfies, which is Jesus. And he kept calling me back. So anyway, I've been sober almost 20 years. And I love to tell people the story of how Jesus really became real to me 10 years ago when I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And again, I said, I believe I had the Holy Spirit the whole time, but I was prayed over and received a filling of the Spirit 10 years ago and really had a personal encounter with God where he, I encountered his love and his presence in a way that I never had. And he really became real for me. So I share that with people who have ever feeling dry or dead or feeling that God doesn't love them. Even if you don't have an experience, you have to ground yourself in the word of God as truth. And you have to believe, you have to make that decision to believe what the word says and then let it transform your life. And it really does. It's the living word. So um, I have that. And then I have the story of a, a, problem, I guess you could say, for lack of a better word, that happened in my marriage. Because a lot of us think when we get sober, oh, it's all smooth sailing, you know? And I was really radically transformed by the Lord in 2003 after trying to quit drinking for four years, failing and relapsing, like I told you, going back into the things of the world. And I was a news reporter and an anchor during this time and trying to keep my secret lifestyle undercover. And every time I would sin, there was so much shame and rejection or just self-hatred and I didn't want to do it, but I kept going back, just like the Apostle Paul says in Romans 7, you know, I kept doing what I hated, even though I knew it was wrong. And I just didn't know how I was ever going to be free of this. And then it came to the last time I drank on August 21st, 2003. And I came out of a 12-hour blackout. I didn't remember anything that had happened. And I just, in this moment of desperation, I finally surrendered and I repented. That fancy church word that a lot of churches don't want to talk about anymore I finally became so disgusted with my lifestyle that I wanted more than anything for um, to never drink again. And I begged God, that was really just my prayer was this simple prayer, please don't ever let me drink again. And that was it. I mean, he radically freed me in that moment, freed me of craving, obsession, compulsion, and those things. There were still character defects. I'm not saying that I was just perfected in an instant. We never are, of course. But I did have the addiction lifted off of me in that moment. And then I went on to get married and have a couple more children and have a beautiful life until my husband and I started struggling with, you know, feeling like church was inconvenient and feeling like, you know, we were just really losing God in our lives. We were not making him first. We were not prioritizing him. And we started to struggle and sin began to creep into our marriage. And there was a, a major betrayal. And we thought we weren't going to come back from that. We thought that it was going to be the end of us. And the world told us that too. Much of the world that we were seeking through secular therapy. And, you know, we were just scrambling in our own limited way to try to fix it because we still hadn't really met Jesus in that personal way. And let me just, you know, I'll summarize this. I know we're kind of getting to the end here, but after going through different therapists and trying to fix things, we stumbled upon this intercessory prayer team. And this little obscure church in Bloomington, it, in it's in Minnesota, and no one really knew about it. Just I had a couple people tell me about it two times in one week. You need to go to Jesus Heals. And I was like, what is that? What is Jesus Heals? It was just a little intercessory prayer ministry. They started praying with us. They started showing us how to forgive each other, how to move on, how to repent, how to fully let Jesus heal our hearts. Because we look to the world and the things of the world, like I said, they help, but only Jesus can transform your heart. So that was just transformational and pivotal for us. We were able to forgive each other for, for both of our, we had both sinned. Um, 
and just be able to move on. And he restored our marriage. So it's been 10 years restored. And through that restoration, we've been able to minister to other couples. We've done a marriage ministry for eight years. And through all these things, so Andy, as I summarize this, salvation, addiction, betrayal, um, I throughout my life, I'd look to, to people, I'd look to outside myself for the answers. And Jesus showed me that I had to make him first. He had to be first place, that I could not put other idols before him. Idols are detestable to God. Um, he wants to be first. He doesn't want your, your discarded seconds. And I learned that no thing of the world, whether it was a person or a job or anything, could, could provide for me the way that he can. So he was able to take me from this abandoned child who felt like an orphan, who felt like my parents never saw me, who then went into seeking, finding, looking for love in all the wrong places, finally meeting a wonderful man and marrying him. We've been married almost 19 years in September, but we had to learn and we had to have grace and forgiveness and to accept that we both came with faults and baggage and pain and brokenness, but the Lord used it really to make us stronger as a couple and to um, be able to just glorify him through all of that and really bring it to other people. So that that's the point as I close out is to make Jesus known through my life experiences. If, if I look back on my life, do I regret it? No, I don't because the Lord can use the drunk driving, the mistakes, the sin, the, the things that happened in my marriage to show somebody else his, his power and his just awesomeness that he can come into any situation, even something that looks hopeless and bleak and, and he can change it if you're willing to submit it to him. And that's what we do on the Hope Report. Bring people on and let them tell their stories like that. Their stories of how the Lord took them and transformed their lives. And it's not always, you know, roses. It's not always what you want. But particularly during the marriage thing, I became okay with whatever God wanted to do. I really wanted his will above anything else, above my will, above whatever I was trying to make happen. I just submitted to him and there's so much peace there and just being willing to um, let him have control of your life said, because the enemy would love for us to say, stay silent, stay wrapped in shame and bondage and thinking that we're so much worse than other people. When that's really what sets us free is being able to surrender it to the Lord because there's forgiveness, no matter what we have done or how far we've gone. If we tell our story, telling a secret really, you know, it, it takes away its power. And so now the Lord can use it and we can use it to minister to others. You've seen down below uh, websites for Hope Report and, and Lindo Recovery Network. And, and we also have got, you've seen some pictures of publications that's that's been been flashing there during this interview. I want you to go check this out. Go If, if you have any questions, feel free to email them, get a hold of them. If you have any questions about how you could get involved or how 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 their ministry could help you you out, please uh, please get a hold of them. May I mention I wrote a book, a memoir. It's called Blackout to Blessing, and it's going to come out this fall. People can go to my website melissahurray.com and you can pre-order or put it in your email when you you can receive notification when the book is available. It's really um it's really raw and it was kind of difficult to write but now that 20 years have gone by I guess it's a little easier to talk about these things. So I really like I said my goal is to share Jesus and to make him known through my story. Please pass this interview on to some somebody else as well. Um and uh as we end this interview, I would like for you to take a few minutes and pray for Melissa. You see God's got great works for Melissa and her team. And uh, they need your prayers. She needs your prayers and you need the practice, folks. So pray that God would use her in a great way. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing your heart today. Oh, thank you, Andy. I appreciate it so much. It's been great. And thank you for what you do. This is a wonderful ministry and um, you're touching many lives with what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for uh, coming to more Morning Moments. Keep coming back. And may God richly bless you. <laughs>